Okay, we're going to look at this other another family of uh, of organic molecules, the alcohols. So if we look at these, we've got the first four alcohols here. So this one uh, it would be, you know, it's formerly would be CH4O, but very often that's actually written as CH3OH, and that is methanol. The next one, of course, is ethanol. And the formula you can write as C, uh, C2H5OH, or if you prefer, you can just write C2H6O. But this showing it that way shows you that the OH is, uh, the, the H is bonded to the oxygen. A bit more, makes a bit more sense. Uh, this one is called propanol. And that would be C3H7OH. And finally, butanol, uh, C4H9OH. So if you look at the, they do have a general formula. Each uh, family of molecules always has its own general formula. That would be CnH2n plus two uh, with one oxygen. Okay, now the interesting thing is uh, alcohols is that they're all, these are all liquids at room temperature. Um, we can tr contrast that to the corresponding alkane. So if you think about uh, methane, methane has got a boiling point of about, I think it's about minus 160 degrees C. So it's a gas it, um, room temperatures where methanol has got a boiling point of, I think about 70 degrees C. So having the um, OH functional group, as you can see here, obviously makes a big difference to their physical properties, um, tends to make them liquids rather than gases. Also having that OH, it means that they will all, uh, they'll all mix with water. Uh, whereas if you think about alkanes, well, alkanes, uh, which are long enough to be liquids, say for example, uh, octane C8H18, um, which is present in petrol, that will not mix with water. Uh, and again, it's having this OH group on it that makes, that changes its properties, enables it to mix with water. Right, probably the most important alcohol is ethanol. Uh, and that's the alcohol which is present in alcoholic drinks. It's also used very widely uh, as a solvent. Um, Water isn't that good at dissolving a lot of things. So in industrial processes and many other you know, times you, you need to use another solvent and ethanol is a good solvent. Right now, the two ways of making ethanol, well, we've come across one of them already before uh, in the alkenes topic. So I won't talk about it in too much detail, but basically you get an alkene, which you get from cracking, ethene that is, and you react that with water steam so it works like that what happens is the double bond breaks um, and that means the carbons are not forming enough bonds they need to form four bonds so you're going to get the hydrogen from the water goes on there so the water molecule is going to break here like this and the OH goes on there okay and that is ethanol right and that can be made from ethene as I say and ethene comes from cracking crude oil. <coughs> right, the ethanol which is present in alcoholic drinks isn't made like that usually, it is made by fermentation. So fermentation requires yeast, so you have a big vat of, if I want to make beer or wine, you have a vat of solution which contains uh, sugars, such as glucose, C6H12O6. <clears throat> you add yeast to that, which is a living organism. And the yeast uses the sugar as, the as a food. And what happens is you get anaerobic respiration there. And so the equation would be right, C6H12O6. The enzymes in the yeast catalyze these reactions. And there's many steps involved in it. And you will get a solution of ethanol. So you get C2H5OH and you get carbon dioxide. So that's what 
makes beer fizzy is the or sparkling wine fizzy is the CO2 made during fermentation. Um, to balance that equation, you just need a two there and a two there, or balances. Um, the so you you leave this for an, you you got to leave in a warm condition, say twenty five degrees C. You obviously don't want to go above thirty seven because you kill the yeast. Um, you need need to leave it for several days, and eventually you'll end up with a solution of ethanol in water. And you can't get any stronger than 15% uh, ethanol. So if you have 100 centimeters cubed of solution, 15 centimeters cubed of it will be ethanol. You can't get any stronger than that, no matter how much sugar you add, because the ethanol is actually poisonous to the yeast. It kills the yeast. Okay, so you can't get pure ethanol uh, by this process, which is, of course, called fermentation. Now we need to know about the combustion of ethanol uh, of all alcohols and alcohols all burn to make carbon dioxide and water. So we just, let's use ethanol as an example. So we've got C2H5OH. Now alcohols tend to burn with a pretty clean flame, quite a blue flame. And that's because you get, you don't get much incomplete combustion because you've got oxygen actually in the ethanol molecule. So it kind of oxidizes itself. You need some extra oxygen from the air, of course, but so, oxygen and you'll get carbon dioxide and water so to balance that we're going to need two carbon dioxides i've got uh, six waters on this uh, six hydrogens on this side so i'm going to need three waters <coughs> here so i'm going to need a total of seven oxygens right we've got one oxygen in the ethanol molecule there with the blue arrow so we need three o2s there that will be balanced and all the other alcohols they will they will burn to give carbon dioxide and water um they can be used as fuels uh, and of course in ex uh, well the advantage of ethanol over ethane for example is that it is a liquid so sometimes that is easier to carry around than a gas so for example a camping stove those trangia camping stoves they work uh they use ethanol as a fuel. They get a very blue, very hot flame with them. Okay, right, now we need to talk about uh, the reaction of alcohols with um, sodium. Alcohols will react with sodium. Now, to make sense of this, we need to, let's think about the reaction uh, of sodium and they <coughs> let's think about the reaction of water with sodium so if you remember if you get uh, you usually do it in a big trough yeah you get some water there because it's a very violent reaction you put in some sodium there's the sodium and it actually floats on water and it skates around the surface and dissolves and fizzes very quickly and the reaction is over very quickly and what happens is you get some na with water you get hydrogen gas produced and you get sodium hydroxide, which makes it a solution alkaline. Okay, there's a sodium as a solid. So water, so you can see the sodium dissolves, uh, H2. So to balance that, we just need to double everything up here. Now, the reason why I, I mentioned this is obviously it's a good bit of revision because you need to know that reaction anyway. But if you think about um, water, and methanol they're actually and ethanol or any alcohol they're all pretty similar because if i draw so here's ethanol and it contains uh, an oh group and so does water of course contains an oh group so if you like water is almost like an alcohol with no carbons in it so you've got an oh group in each case there and it's this OH group which reacts with the um, with, with with the sodium, and one of the hydrogens actually ends up uh, that that goes and that goes to make the hydrogen there. So when you put um, so when you put some 
<coughs> sodium into alcohol. Right, first, let's draw a little ch test tube of ethanol, okay? And you don't need, need to know the equation for that, for this, for this reaction. You've got ethanol there. You put a piece of sodium in. Now, first of all, the big difference is sodium will sink, okay, in ethanol because it is not as dense as water and it will fizz quite slowly. It's quite a steady fizzing. It's a slower reaction than the, the reaction of sodium with water, but you produce hydrogen gas, bubbles of hydrogen gas there. It's essentially, and it's the OH group is reacting, and it's the OH group in water, which is reacting with the sodium. Okay, we're nearly there with this. Now, on this specification, it says you have to know the reaction of alcohols with oxidizing agents, okay? Now, alcohols can be oxidized. Okay, so for example, if I get ethanol, I don't mean oxidized all the way to carbon dioxide and water, just a mild oxidation. So if I get ethanol, I'll draw it this and you you oxidize it with a mild chemical oxidizing agent what happens is you turn it into this now that's ethanol and in the next topic you may not already know but this is this functional group is the carboxylic acid group And this is actually called ethanoic acid, which is in vinegar. Now we, you can, that oxidation actually occurs when uh, wine or beer goes off. There's a bacteria which catalyzes that reaction and oxygen in the air oxidizes it. So the, the wine will turn into vinegar. Ethanoic acid is in vinegar. Okay, but we can actually carry out that with a chemical oxidizing agent also. And you don't need to know the name of the chemical oxidizing agent, but I'll give it to you anyway. But so if you get a test tube of ethanol, some ethanol, and we're going to add to that uh, the oxidizing agent, which is called potassium dichromate. I'll just write down the formula. So it's K2Cr2O7. And you need a bit of sulfuric acid in there as well. And this is this stuff here it's orange I'll underline it orange and it is quite a strong oxidizing agent it's got all that oxygen it's got seven oxidized oxygens in there it's an oxidizing agent so if you leave that with the ethanol if you, you will happen at room temperature warm it up happens even faster now this is a an orangey color this solution potassium dichromate is orange um, and what happens when it's the oxidizing agent gets reduced itself to it will turn green because uh, and that green color is actually called chromium this is chromium ions cr3 plus ions yeah you don't need to know that i'm just telling you anyway in case you're wondering it goes green and the ethanol will be oxidized uh to ethanoic acid if you add enough oxidizing agent to oxidize it all and you get a color change now this color change from orange to green that used to be used as the basis of the old breathalyzer test for um for alcohol right you used to have a uh, what there was was a tube okay with a bag on the end of the tube the bag on the end of the tube was just i think you had to blow enough air <coughs> just to fill that bag up which was two liters or whatever it was and in in there there was orange there's a jelly with orange dichromate in there and you blow air through okay across here and if there's alcohol in your breath it would actually reduce the it would react with the potassium dichromate and start turning it green and the more alcohol in your breath the longer the further that green would go along the tube and indicate that you had alcohol in your breath because you've got alcohol in, in your blood. Okay, so that is all we need to say about alcohols. So it's quite a bitty little um, topic, but uh, they're all, all the things that I've mentioned here are actually in the specification.